Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing the fourth installment of the series on some answered questions. Today's topic is a rather interesting one and one that you're probably familiar with. It is about Abraham and it kind of relates back to the previous uh, discussion or the previous answer about the needs of an educator. And naturally I, I think regardless of your uh, religious beliefs or your own personal concepts of philosophy, religion, spirituality, that you can probably I think it would be safe to say to decide that Abraham was indeed an educator. So let's take a look. This one's short, compared, especially compared to the third one. It's only a couple pages. So for today, I'm probably going to do Abraham, and then the next video would be Moses, and then Christ. So we'll have uh, potentially three today. Okay. Abraham. One of those who possessed this power and was assisted by it was Abraham. And this power is, in my opinion, what we were talking about before in terms of uh, the need of an educator. And the proof of it was that he was born in Mesopotamia and a, of a family who were ignorant of the oneness of God. He opposed his own nation and people and even his own family by rejecting all their gods. So that right there tells you about the, you know, the insurmountable odds that he had to overcome. He was basically left to himself in terms of resisting the traditional belief of the time of being a polytheistic society and asserting the notion of there only being one God. Alone and without help, he resisted a powerful tribe, a task which is neither simple nor easy. Uh, you know, tribes can have a lot of power and influence over someone, and that's true even to today let alone thousands of years ago in a point in time where if you were exiled from your family or you were exiled from your home, chances are you're probably going to either suffer greatly or perhaps die. It was a very different world and much to uh, one's chagrin, it might have not been a very comfortable existence, I'm sure as you can imagine. It is, as, it is as if in this day someone were to go to a Christian people who are attached to the Bible and deny Christ. Or in the papal court, God forbid, if such a one were in the most powerful manner to blaspheme against Christ and oppose the people. These people believe not in one God, but in many gods, to whom they ascribed miracles. Therefore they all arose against him, and no one supported him except Lot, his brother's son, and one or two other people of no importance. At last, reduced to the utmost distress by the opposition of his enemies, he was obliged to leave his native land. In reality, they banished him in order that he might be crushed and destroyed, and that no trace of him might be left. Abraham then came into the region of the Holy Land. His enemies considered that his exile would lead to his destruction and ruin, as it seemed impossible that a man banished from his native land, deprived of his rights and oppressed on all sides, even though he were a king, could escape extermination. But Abraham stood fast and showed forth extraordinary firmness, and God made this exile to be to his eternal honor, until he established the unity of God in the midst of a polytheistic generation. This exile became the cause of the progress of the descendants of Abraham, and the Holy Land was given to them. As a result, the teachings of Abraham were spread abroad, a Jacob appeared among his posterity, and a Joseph who became ruler in Egypt. In consequence of his exile, a Moses and a being like Christ were manifested from his posterity, and Hagar was found from whom Ishmael was born, one of whose descendants was Muhammad. In consequence of his exile, the Bab appeared from his posterity, and the prophets of Israel were numbered among the descendants of Abraham. And uh, the Bab is a... Uh, is a manifestation or a prophet in the Baha'i faith. Many Baha'is, or I guess you could just say the faith in general, considers the Baha'i to be kind of like a uh, John the Baptist, you know, in the way that um, John the Baptist prepared the way for individuals to be on the lookout for Christ. Uh, the Bab was a prophet that was preparing people for the coming of Baha'u'llah. And there's a really good book called The Dawnbreakers. And uh, you can see on uh, Clearwater Baha'is, their channel, I believe they have the entire uh, book read. So if you want to check that out, it's really good historical uh, documentation of the early faith, of the early days of the Baha'i faith. And it has a lot of really interesting details from, you know, defending uh, themselves against a tyrannical 
uh, attack from um, the Persian government, I believe, that at the time. There's a lot of really good instances of heroic deeds, valor, uh, sacrifice. It's a really interesting take on what was going on in that time. There is a another interesting documentation from, I believe his name was E.G. Brown. He was a British historian in the 19th century that was really into uh, Middle Eastern studies. And he was over visiting, uh, I think Israel, not Israel, but uh, Persia during this time. And he was uh, just kind of going over and seeing what was going on in the Middle East. And he documents some interesting stuff as well. But The Dawnbreakers, interesting, really good book. It's a bit, a bit uh, detailed heavy and has a lot of uh, names that you may not be familiar with, but it's, it's a really good read and very historically accurate. It's one of the most historically accurate documentations of a world religion. So, and so it will continue forever and ever. Finally, in consequence of his exile, the whole of Europe and most of Asia came under the protecting shadow of the God of Israel. See what a power it is that enabled a man who was a fugitive from his country to found such a family, to establish such a faith, and to promulgate such teachings. Can anyone say that all this occurred accidentally? We must be just. Was this man an educator or not? Since this exile of Abraham from Ur to Aleppo in Syria produced this result, we must consider what will be the effect of the exile of Baha'u'llah in his several removes from Tehran to Baghdad, from thence to Constantinople, to Amelia, and to the Holy Land. See what a perfect educator Abraham was. And one of the footnotes, it said the Bob's descent was from Muhammad. So that's kind of interesting as well. And I believe Baha'u'llah could actually trace his lineage all the way back to Abraham. I mean, he was of a uh, royal family in Persia. And so I guess they do a lot of extensive documentation from their uh, genealogy dating back thousands of years.